In this video, we're going to implement the binary search algorithm in Java. Binary search sounds like it could be really complicated, but it's really not so bad once you understand how it works. It's also a great algorithm to learn to write for a beginner. I'll also show you how you can do a binary search with just one line of code using Java's built-in libraries. As always, my full Java course is available in the link down in the description. There you'll find over eight hours of exclusive Java lessons covering dozens of topics. So go check it out. You can also find the full source code for this video in a link down in the description. So go grab it. First, let's just talk about what exactly a binary search is and why it is better than a regular search. Binary search is just a way that you can check whether a specific value is present inside a sorted array. So let's say we had some array of integers, for example, that was 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and 11. All any search algorithm does is just take some number that you give the algorithm, let's say we gave it the number 9, and it just tells you whether or not that value exists anywhere in the array. So normally, if you didn't have an algorithm like binary search, if you wanted to check whether a given value was in your array, you could just iterate through every item in the array, checking its value until you found the value that you were looking for. Now that's totally fine and it does work, but the problem is if you have an enormous array of integers, it can start to become kind of slow because it has to check every single value in the array until it finds the one that it's looking for. But if you know that the array that you're looking at is sorted in order, so in the case of integers, they go from smallest to largest like we have here, then you can instead use the binary search algorithm to get your result much faster than you could with a regular iterative search. Now it is very important for your binary search to work at all that the values that you're giving it have to be in order. That's very important. If you're working with an array that is not currently in order, you're going to want to sort it in order first. And you can do that in any number of ways. I've got lots of videos about sorting algorithms, so go check them out. But I just want to make it clear that it is important. Your array has to be in order for binary search to work. All right. So here's how binary search works. Now, instead of just starting at the very beginning of the array and checking every value, what we're going to do is first check the value at the very center of the array, the, the middle value of the array. The array here has seven elements, and so our middle element here is the number five. So now that we've selected the middle element in our array, what we do is compare it to the number that we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for the number nine. So first we check, is this the number that we're looking for? And if it is, great, we're done and we found it. But in this case, it's not. Nine does not equal five, so we have to continue. So what we do is say, okay, is nine greater than five or less than five? Here, nine is greater than five. So what does that mean? Because we know that our array is sorted in order from smallest to largest, we know that if the number nine is in this array, it is going to be to the right of the number five. Now the important part of what that means is that we can completely eliminate looking in that entire half of the array that is less than five. That is the key to how a binary search is so much faster than a regular iterative search. The next step in binary search is basically just to redo the binary search in just that half of the array that might contain the value that we're looking for. So basically we're gonna do a binary search for the number nine here with just these three values. And we're gonna do that exactly the same way as we did before. So first we're going to choose the middle element of our array and check its value. So here that is now the number nine. Now we compare that number to the number that we're looking for. Is nine nine? Yes it is. So we found the number that we were searching for. Now after the algorithm finds that number, all it returns is the index of that number in the entire array. So here that nine is at index, so this is zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So our binary search algorithm would return the number five because that is the index where we found the number that we're looking for. But if that hadn't been the number we were looking for, let's say instead of that we were looking for the number seven, well, we would just continue doing the exact same steps we did before. We would have compared seven with nine and said, okay, seven isn't equal to nine. Okay, is it less than nine or greater than nine? Well, seven is less than nine. So that means that again, because our array is in sorted order from smallest to largest, 
we can completely eliminate the entire right half of that subarray. We don't have to look there. We know it's not there. So then we can repeat that binary search algorithm on just the one small part of the array that's left. And then of course we see, okay, seven equals seven, so we found our value there. So you might be thinking, all right, well, what do you do if the value that you're searching for actually isn't in the array? So let's say instead of nine or seven, we were looking for the number six. Well, up until this point of the search, things would have gone exactly the same way. But now we're comparing, okay, is six equal to seven? Well, no, it's not. But the problem is there's nothing else left in the array. So we know that it is not present in our array. How we handle that usually in a search algorithm, we don't throw an exception or anything like that, but instead we just return a negative one. We know that negative one is not a valid index of the array, so we return negative one as a way of just saying, sorry, I didn't find the element that you were looking for in the array. So maybe this gives you a glimpse at why the binary search algorithm is so much faster than a regular iterative search. Let's say that you had an array of like a million items in it. Now a regular iterative search would just start at the beginning and say, okay, I've got to check all these million items and see if it's in here. But a binary search can start in the middle and say, okay, is the thing I'm looking for greater than or equal to this? And then it can immediately completely remove half of the entire array. So in just one step, the binary search algorithm reduces the problem that it's dealing with by half. I think that's enough of this. Let's jump right into the code. All right, so to implement our binary search algorithm, uh, first, instead of writing our algorithm right there in the main method, let's go ahead and create a separate private method that will do the binary search that we will call from our main method. So we'll go ahead and make a new method here, a private static. Now the return type of our method is going to be an int because we want to return the index of the value that we find if we find it. We'll call it binary search, pretty creative name. Now our binary search algorithm has to take in two parameters. First, it has to take in the actual array of ints that it's searching in. We'll just call that numbers. And then it also has to take in the value that it's searching for. So we'll call that one number to find. So here's how I think we're going to do this in the code. So I think we're going to use two pointers. We're going to have one that's at the very first element in our array and one at the very last element in our array. And what we're going to do is find the middle value between those two pointers. And then we check whether the number that we're looking for is equal to that value or if it's greater than or less than that value. Let's say that we find that the number that we're looking for is less than that middle value. We're going to take that pointer that's currently at the end of our array and we're going to move it just to the left of that middle number. And then we're going to repeat our binary search algorithm with just that half of the array that's contained within our two pointers. Now, if the number that we were looking for happened to be larger than that middle number, we would instead take our low pointer and move it just to the right of that middle number. And we continue our binary search with just that half of the array. So you can kind of see how it works, right? What we're going to do is keep dividing what we're looking at in half by moving our pointers until we zero in on that one number that we're looking for, and then we can return the index of that number. So first, let's go ahead and create those two pointers that we need. Um, they'll just be ints. We'll just call these pointers low and high. So first we'll create our low pointer. So int low equals zero because we want to start it at the very beginning, the very first element of our array. And we also need another int, we'll call it high, and we want to start that at the very last index of the array. And we can get that index by calling just numbers dot length and then subtracting one. So the next part of our algorithm is kind of going to be the, the main part of it, um, which is actually going to be a while loop. Now our while loop is basically going to keep looping until our two pointers, you know, cutting off half of the array as they get closer and closer to each other, until our two pointers cross each other. So the condition in our while loop is going to be while low is less than or equal to high. Now that we have all this set up, the, the first step in this meaty part of the binary search is we have to identify the index of the middle item in the array that we're searching in right now. So let's go ahead and create that. We'll say int like middle position. Now that middle position is basically the average 
of our low and high indices. So we can get the average of low and high just by taking low plus high and dividing by two. Well, next, we need to identify what the value is at that index. What actual number is at that spot in the array? So we'll use another variable for that. We'll call it int middle number, and we'll set that equal to the value um, of our numbers array at that middle position. So now what we want to do is check whether the number that we're looking for, our number to find, is equal to that number or less than or greater than that number. First, let's check if it is equal to that number. So we can say if the number to find is equal to this middle number, then that means that our search is done. We have found the number that we're looking for. So all we have to do is return the index where we found that number. And that index is our middle position variable. So all we have to do in this case is return middle position. But if this wasn't exactly the number that we were looking for, we have to deal with that situation. So what if the number that we were looking for, our number to find, is less than our middle number? So in that case, remember, what we want to do is we want to take our high pointer and move it just to the left of our middle pointer, our middle position, because we know that the number that we're looking for is less than this middle number right now. So to do that, we can just take our high pointer and set it equal to the middle position minus one. So that'll make it just to the left of that middle position index. So now we know that the number that we're looking for is not equal to the middle number. We know that it's also not less than the middle number. So at this point in the algorithm, we know for sure if we put in an else here, we know that our number is greater than the middle number. So we don't even need to add another if condition if we don't want to. You can if you want, you can add, okay, if number to find is greater than middle number, if that makes you feel nice or it just makes more sense in your head to have it, you totally can. But in, at this point in the algorithm, we just don't really need it because, uh, because the way the logic works, we know it's not equal because it would have returned already. We know that it's not less because it would hit this if. So in this else, we know that it is greater. Now, since we know that, we can take our low pointer and set it just to the right of that middle position. So to do that, we'll take low and set it equal to middle position plus one. So now what this while loop will keep doing is moving those high and low pointers closer and closer together each iteration until they meet and eventually find that number that they're looking for, or eventually the low pointer will be set to one higher than the high pointer. So what that means is our high and low pointers move closer and closer to each other until they met at one single number. And then they still didn't find the number that they were looking for, and so they crossed each other. So at that point, it will kick out of this while loop. So what that means is outside of this while loop, we know that we didn't find the number that we were looking for. It wasn't present in the array. So all we have to do in that case is report our failure uh, by returning just uh, the number negative one to indicate, sorry, we didn't find it. That is everything we need. I think this is a complete binary search algorithm. All we need is some code that calls it to do some testing. So first we're going to need an array of integers uh, to pass into our search algorithm to start to find some stuff in. So we'll just call this int array ints, and we'll just go ahead and give it some values. Um, let's use the same array that we did in the whiteboard thing there. So that was just one, two, four, five, seven, nine, and 11. So now what we want to do is call the binary search method that we implemented down here, and we have to pass in first the array that we want to do the search in. So that would just be ints. And then we want to put in the number that we're looking for. So let's say we want to search for the number nine. And then we'll go ahead and print out our results. Otherwise, we'll never know what the result was. Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Here we go, cross your fingers. Okay, so it returned five. It's saying that the number nine is at index five in our array. So let's check to make sure that's right. So that'd be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So that's right, it returned the correct value. All right, so that's one test that is successful, uh, but let's hit it a little bit harder with some more values to make sure that it returns 
the right result every time. So let's say we were looking for a number that did not exist in our array. So let's look for the number eight. So if we go ahead and run that, we get negative one, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because eight didn't exist in the array, the algorithm should report that by returning negative one. So let's try some other like edge cases. Let's say we wanted to look for like the very first thing in the array. So let's say we were looking for the number one. It should return an index of zero and it does, awesome. And let's look for the highest element in our array, which is 11. And it returned six, which is correct. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks good. As a quick side note, if you want, you can change this algorithm to, uh, instead of using a while loop, you can change it to be a recursive algorithm with just a couple of pretty small tweaks. Now, I think I'll leave that as a small exercise for you to figure that out if you're curious. I do have an entire uh, video on recursion if you wanna go check that out to learn about recursion generally. But I'll also link to my recursive solution for this algorithm in the description below. So if you get stuck, go ahead and check that out. Now, I also mentioned at the beginning of this video that you can do a binary search with just one line of code using Java's built-in libraries. So here's how you can do that. So what you can do is call arrays dot binary search. That is a method provided to you automatically in Java, and that's in the java.util.arrays package. Uh, that's where you can find this class and call this method. And then you can just pass into this binary search method exactly the same parameters that we passed into our binary search, which is first the array that you want to search in. So in this case, it's ints and the value that you want to search for. So again, let's go ahead and search for the number nine. And let's go ahead and change this to look for the number nine too, just so we can compare the results. And we also have to go ahead and actually print out uh, the result of our Java library call. So I think that's it. Let's go ahead and run it. And hopefully we get the same output from both of these calls. And yes, we do. We get five from both of them. So like so many things, Java doesn't force you to reinvent the wheel if you don't want to. If you don't want to write your own binary search algorithm, you can just use its built-in one. Uh, just like it has sorting algorithms and stuff built in, you just call a sort method and it does it really, really well. Same as for binary search. But it's still a really good thing for you to know how to do and understand how it works to code on your own. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, of course, let me know by hitting the like button and be sure to comment. Let me know what else you'd like to see. And of course, subscribe so you can see all of that awesome stuff in the future. As always, thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate you being here with me. I'll see you next time.